Good morning, family, and happy Sabbath. It's so good to be here on the Sabbath day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. My name is Pastor Dion Chapman. I am the Associate Outreach Pastor at the Breath of Life Church in Inglewood, California. I'd like to welcome you all today for tuning in and for watching here at the Tamron Avenue Seventh-day Adventist Church located in Compton, California. It is good to be here in the house one more time. And I know that this is a little bit different. Usually that I, when I come to Tamarind, it's full of people. It's full of, uh, of folk that are ready to worship and ready to get their praise on and to, and to get, give God the glory. However, we know that we are still in the middle of this pandemic, and I just want to thank God for the pastor of the church, Pastor Sylvester, who has been doing a wonderful and outstanding job to make certain that his folk are, are safe and the people of God are, are, are still moving in faith and in the, in the glory of God and giving him the glory. All right. And so today uh, we're, going to, we're going to bring the message. Um, and, and I want to thank those. I say we because it's not just me. I want to thank those that are here, uh, part of the audio team and uh, also the visual team doing an excellent job. But uh, we're going to have a word of prayer. We're going to preach and teach. And then we're going to let you go about your day. I know that you've got the veggie ticks uh, in the oven right now. Some of you, the lasagna or for, uh, for my Caribbean brothers, some of the rice and peas. OK, I know that you got that brewing right now, so we're not going to keep you long. But we're going to give God the praise and the glory for his day as we continue worship him in spirit and truth. So let's pause for a moment and have a word of prayer uh, before we begin, shall we? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Thanking you once again for giving us, Lord, yet one more chance. And now, Father, I pray as I preach and teach that I'm also listening. Challenge our hearts, challenge our minds, but most of all, change our lives. In the awesome, magnificent name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let's say together, Amen. Amen. Again, I welcome you for those of you who are just tuning in. I know you might be behind your laptop or you might be on your phones or uh, you might be somewhere in your house on your computer. I bid you just to pause and just labor with me this morning as the message entitled is Jessica's Well. Jessica's Well. Amen. Amen. So let's get to it. Let's get to work, family. Um, Three things, three things as I want to bring to your attention as we are going through, it seems like the longest year in history. Three things that I want to make certain that we really key in on. And if there's anything that this pandemic has taught me, it has taught me that we must increase these areas. Y'all listen to me this morning. We must increase in these areas, all right? They are faith family, and friends. Someone who was close by, all right, pause for a moment, grab uh, your pen and your paper and write this down. Faith, family, and friends, all right? Uh, um, we live in an era that disbelieves uh, in, 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 in God and in hope in God. I mean, after all, uh, in China, uh, we, we, we've heard about this coronavirus. Uh, in Australia, it's fires and, and, and destroyed acres of land across thousands of indigenous wildlife. In Mexico, it's volcanic eruptions. In the Middle East, it's Turkey bombing Syria. It's Iran bombing Iraq. It's in America, it's blood versus crip. Uh, it's Christians versus Hebrew Israelites. It's gays versus straights. It's 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 blacks versus whites. It's Trump versus everybody. I mean, it's hard for us to really have faith or believe in God. That word even now in the middle of this pandemic has almost seemed like it's fictional. I mean, nothing makes sense like it used to. Words have developed for folk who, who once, back in the day, when someone said that they really cared about you or that they really loved you, it really meant that they cared about you or that they really loved you. But today, in today's generation, words have now developed like, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I trust you, but I don't trust you. I'm with you, but I'm not really with you. It seems like it's really hard, y'all, to believe or have faith in God. Trust is only seen now as fictional, and it's really hard to really grasp hold and dig your faith and your feet 
in something or someone beyond what you can see. And, I, and as I began to do some research, I, I, I found out, I found out that the only lasting principle to remove toxins of pain and suffering in your life is by holding on to your faith. In fact, if you can feed your faith, I promise you, your doubts will starve to death. Y'all listen to me this morning. The great prophet Elijah was instructed in, 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 in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 12 through 15. 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 12 through 15. The Bible says that the great prophet Elijah was instructed by God to go to a woman's house, watch this, whom he had never met. Uh, the Lord then said, look her up on Facebook and, and, and hit her in her inbox and let her know that you have been told by God to come her way because you're on assignment. Meanwhile, this woman who, 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 wasn't, who wasn't religious, she didn't go to church, she didn't believe in God, she was really facing a crisis. You see, she had run out of food. Uh, she had run out of food stamps. Uh, she had been laid off her job. Uh, I'm sure because the Bible doesn't really speak about it. But as I use, I'm sure, using my spiritual imagination, the Bible never talks about in this story, it never talks about the baby daddy. So I'm kind of believing somewhere along the line, baby daddy was tripping, didn't want to give her no money, didn't want to help give no scraps that he found, uh, and, and, and things were out of control. Let me just pause. Pause for a moment. Sometimes uh, when we are going through a situation, uh, we want to go back to the old way of doing things. Y'all better listen to me this morning. Uh, if in fact God has delivered you from something, from somewhere or from someone, don't go back to the same way that you were used to doing things. Uh, in other words, when you're going through your storm, uh, when you're going through your COVID-19 situation, God is saying, don't you regress, but continually progress. And so the Bible lets us know that there was a famine in Israel for three years due to Ahab, the king. And God tells Elijah, to find this woman in Zarephath. And, 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 and Elijah looks, he, he, he looks her up, and, 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 and the Bible says that God had even spoken to this woman, and at the, as the Bible says, that he continually decided to search her out. The Lord had came to her and visited her and let her know that she was going to be visited by a man of God. Now, 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 this takes a lot of belief and faith and hope, especially in the midst of a pandemic. Because she was, she was facing her own pandemic. It got real, y'all. You thought it was real back in, uh, in March when folk were running around trying to, trying to find Clorox. It was real for her. Y'all listen this morning. And so the Bible says, follow me, that Elijah shows up via GPS on the way to her home, and, and I'm, I'm so sure as you just walk with me with your spiritual imagination this morning, I'm sure that he sees her a few blocks away as he's rolling up on her, and, 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 and he sees her as she's dressed in some dirty clothes, and tears are flowing from her eyes, and, and he watches as, as she, she sparks up a cigarette and, and pauses for a, moment, for a moment as she's just thinking about the pain, and she's overwhelmed in her soul, and Elijah parks up next to this woman, and he Said to her, he says to her, listen, lady, uh, 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 I've been looking for you on my on, on, on Facebook. Are you the woman that God spoke to me about? And she she begins crying, and 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 Elijah gets out and decides to give her a hug, and 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 and, and, and I can hear these words come from her. First Kings seventeen and twelve. As surely as the Lord your God lives, I have no bread. I have a handful of flour, a jar of oil. I'm about to get these sticks together, make myself and my and my son our last meal, and then we gonna die. It was down to the last of the last. And you know what? Sometimes, y'all, it's really hard to believe in God until you down to your last. Until you down to your last 
a little bit of money, until you're down to your last cry, until you're down to the last few days at your job, until you're down to the last in your bank account. Sometimes it's really hard to really believe in God until you are down to your last option. The Bible says that this lady has no more options. Uh, ain't no stimulus check coming. Uh, ain't nobody going to come and give her any extra uh, funds. Uh, she's down to her last option. And the Bible says uh, that she specifically says to Elijah, the prophet, the man of God, that we are about to go ahead and call it quits. Uh, lay things down. Uh, ain't no more money coming. It's all over. And, and, and here is is where the story gets a little bit crazy because the Bible says that Elijah says to her, listen, do as you planned. But, 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 but before you decide to check out, give me your, the last of your meal first to eat. Then make, then make the food for you and your son because God's about to do something special and magnificent in your life. This atmosphere is about to shift. There's a miracle that's about to happen. If you just trust in what I'm saying to you, but more so than that, if you just trust in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I promise you that by the morning time, things are going to change. But here's what you've got to do. Just give me your little bit of cornbread or whatever else you had, sweetheart. Give it to me first because this is a trust issue. You. This is a covenant uh, that you are about to create with God. I'm speaking to somebody this morning. God is saying, I'm sending folk your way. Sometimes God will send a total stranger your way just to pray for you, just to encourage you, just to let that God is still on the throne and you still need to keep your faith in the master. Now the story becomes real a man she had never met, who calls himself a prophet, says, 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 give me what belongs to you. From a religion that she don't know nothing about. Give me your last meal and you will be blessed and you'll be full. Now I'm almost certain, y'all, I'm almost certain if her son had overheard the conversation his response would have been something along these lines. Mama, Mama, um, with all due respect, I mean, with all sincerity, mm -hmm, uh, no, 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 no disrespect intended, Pastor, uh, but, but, but Mama, and I mean this, I mean this with all sincerity, have you lost your mind? We've been struggling for months. Uh, uh, there's no cable. The cable is off. Ain't no BET. The water is gone. Ain't no snacks. Ain't no internet. Uh, I can't even go out in front and talk to my friends. And, and now you're about to give the last of what we got to this man, to this Negro. Have you lost your mind? I can see him texting his relatives and letting, letting them know, y'all better come quick. I think mama off that stuff. It, it, it come now because she's lost it. But you see, her trust was not in a man. Her trust was in the one who spoke and said, let there be. And the elements combined and God created the heavens and earth. She put her trust in the one who stand, stood out on the constellation and named the stars, uh, who hung his hat uh, on the moon and the one who spoke and, and rivers began to flow and the mountains began to rise. She put her trust in the one who stands in yesterday while occupying today while already moving in tomorrow. She put her trust in the one who who was named Jehovah Jireh, which means God will provide. Y'all don't hear me this morning. She put her trust in the one who spoke, uh, and the elements came together, and the Bible says that the firmament was divided from the firmament, and, 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 and the Bible says that, that the sea was created, and the sky was created, because God spun the earth on its, on its axis, uh, and it's still moving today. She put her trust in the one who could do anything but fail. She became a believer 
in God. And I believe that the reason why we're going through this pandemic, y'all better listen to me this morning, is because church clothes do not dress your soul. I'll say it again to that side of town. I know I, you, we would say I'll speak to this side of the room, but let me speak to that side of town one more time so you can understand it. Church clothes do not dress your soul. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, I'm glad that you asked. You see, we have been going through dress rehearsal over and over and over again in church. Uh, we've been coming to church uh, and pretending like everything is all right, like the earth is still going to keep rolling on. Uh, although we've been talking about prophecy and we've been talking about who we really believe in, uh, when things are really getting real, uh, church clothes don't dress your soul. Uh, either you're going to really believe uh, that God is who he said he is uh, or you won't. Uh, and sometimes uh, it takes an experience, my God, God to allow you to understand uh, that God is who he really is. Uh, you can come to church uh, all day long, uh, all Wednesday long if you want to, uh, but in fact, if you don't have any faith, uh, it's like putting no fuel in your car. No matter how good the car look, the car ain't going to go nowhere if it doesn't have the necessary fuel. Uh, and God is saying, unless you have the faith, faith in me, you will still cycle in the same areas of your life. It's time for you to become a believer. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Who am I talking to? The Bible says that, 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 that she became a believer. She put her trust in God. And, and the Bible tells us that out of all of Israel, this woman had the most faith in God, out of all of Israel, that means that out of all the folk that, that were in the church, out of all the folk, all the elders that were there in Israel, out of all the folk who were teaching Sabbath school, out of all the folk, she had the most faith in all of Israel. Faith. I just decided to stop by this morning and let you know, keep your faith in God. Keep your faith in God when nothing else makes sense. The world is full of sorrow and pain. Nothing makes sense. And oftentimes, sorrow and pain will show up at the doorstep of your soul. But you've got to let... You've got to let both sorrow and pain know that you can stay for the night, but, 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 but you've got to leave uh, because joy is coming in the morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can stay here. You can sleep on the couch. Uh, you can get comfortable for just a minute, uh, but, but, but understand that joy is coming uh, in the morning. Uh, 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 the problem that people face uh, is they can't trust in God because somewhere along the way, somebody ruined uh, their trust making it impossible to have faith in anything, even God. But understand, I read somewhere that the bad people give you experience, the worst people give you a lesson, the good people give you happiness, but the best people give you memories. And God is saying that if you just have uh, uh, your, just go through your, your memory and remember the things that I did for you. That's how you keep your faith. And God. That's why the old folk called him bread for the hungry. That's why they said uh, 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 that he may not come when you want him, but he was right on time. Uh, he's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. Unless you go through your experience, uh, that's how you will understand your faith in God. But the second thing, I got to keep moving. Keep your faith in God. That's the first. Second thing, take care of your family. And John chapter 19 verses 26 through 27 John chapter 19 verses 26 to 26 through 27 the Bible says when Jesus saw his mother and his disciple whom he loved standing behind her he said to his mother woman here is your son then said to the disciple here is your mother and from that hour the disciple took her into his own home the informs us. Listen this morning because as I said before, if this pandemic has taught me nothing else it has taught me that we have to increase our faith in God but we also have to make certain that we continually take care of our family. Let me pause for a minute. How many of us who call ourselves Christians have actually reached out to some folk in the church some, somebody being on your mind just saying hey I'm just calling to pray with you. I'm not talking about a mamsy pamsy prayer but I'm 
talking about a prayer where you are actually trying to seek the very throne room of God. It's time for us to stop playing around with this thing called church and begin to become the believers that God has, exact, has exacted us to be. It's time for us to take care of both our family at home and our church family. The Bible informs us that Jesus was raised in a not-so-good neighborhood. He grew up on the west side of town. Nazareth was no stranger to being on the local news. Jesus was, 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 was used to being uh, serenaded at night by the police sirens. Uh, 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 he was used to seeing the dope dealers riding on the 20-foes with, uh, with, that, with that beat in the trunk. He, he, he saw how the folks would hang out on the lawns during holidays, uh, uh, sipping on the not-so-clear uh, 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 juice. Uh, uh, he saw these things. Uh, and, and the Bible informs us, uh, um, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus identifies himself, his family roots, as being the son of David. Out of all the families he could have chosen, why would he choose to come down through this lineage? Y'all follow me this morning. Uh, David's family was, was far from good. After all, David himself was a player. Uh, David's daughter Tamar, uh, uh, Tamar was raped by her own brother. Rahab was in David's family tree and she was a prostitute. Bathsheba consented to have adultery with David and they had an illegitimate son after David, was, uh, after David killed Bathsheba's baby's daddy. Why is in the world would Jesus identify with a family like that? Uh, well, I'm glad you asked uh, because many of us uh, come from broken family homes uh, and although we don't try to admit that everything is really messed up, uh, we try to pretend as if everything is going right together, but you cannot heal a heart when you do not want to say that it's broken. You cannot heal the wounds in your family if you pretend like everything is okay. Jesus said, I come from David's family tree because I want to let you know I can identify with your pain and your sorrow and your brokenness. But through David's family tree came Jesus, the Messiah, Son of the living God. God is working on somebody's family right now. I don't know who I'm talking to. Somebody's family right now, but then the sound of my voice, I'm looking at you sitting behind your counter. I'm looking at you right now sitting on your couch. You know you've been praying for your wayward son who's not yet come back from home, uh, back to the church. Uh, you know you've been praying for that daughter who's strung out on drugs. Uh, you know you've been praying to God every day and night that God will deliver you from the stress and the hurt and the pain and I want to let you know this morning that although you might be in this predicament you've got to trust the process because God's process will always bring progress and what the devil meant for evil God will turn around and use for your good we all come from awkward pieces and every awkward piece of the family, it creates another piece for the puzzle. What do I mean by that? When, 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 you, when you actually look at a puzzle, it's two awkward shapes that come together and make the real picture. And that's how we see what God has for our family. Nobody's perfect in your family. Nobody's perfect in my family. But both of those awkward pieces come together to create God is trying to show us an image. And some of the reasons why we don't, we, 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 we want to go through, some folk are going through the midst of a pandemic without speaking to folk in their families. And, and what I have to say to that is, listen, 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 family. Stop trying to fight battles with people who are at war with themselves. Some people in the family are fighting inherent demons and strongholds that they did not create. You see, the Bible says that God says he will visit the iniquity of the third and fourth generation, meaning that in the family there are issues. Uh, there have been issues in your gener in generational uh, 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 strongholds in your family. Y'all better get this this morning. They're, that's the reason why the children are so broken. That's the reason why they are going through the low self-esteem. That's 
the reason why they're inclined to the alternative lifestyle. It's because there have been inherent demons that they've been trying to fight. And every year, every generation, that demon gets stronger and stronger and stronger and keeps your family within bondage. That's called spiritual change. And the reason why it cannot break is because you have not decided to face the it in your family. Until you face the it in your family, then and only then will the shackles be broken and your family be ultimately free. The Bible says in Leviticus 26, 40 and 42, read that a little bit later, but just write it down. Leviticus 26, 40 and 42, if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, if then their uncircumcised heart is humbled and they make amends for their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob. Uh, what are you saying, preacher? Well, I'm glad that you ask. Uh, uh, remember the covenant with Jacob. God is saying, uh, if you just face that thing, then I can fix that thing, and I will remember the covenant that I made with my son Jacob. What was the covenant? The covenant was protection in your life. The covenant was blessing to him and his descendants. In other words, when the world is in a hot mess, your family, God is saying, will have their bill paid. When the world is in a hot mess, your family will still have food on the table. When the world is going crazy, your family will still be blessed and protected God is saying it's time for you to settle down and deal with the it. It's driving you crazy. It's separating and dividing your family. And yes, you can still be a Christian and still have family problems. I'm almost done. So the first thing is, I got to keep moving, y'all. The first thing is, keep your faith in God. The second thing is, Fix the it in your family. In the Adams family, there was a mama, their daddy. It was the, the children, but then there was a cousin, it. It didn't really have no name. It just was called an it, right? And it was always around. It came and sat down at the table. It was in the, it was in the house. It played with the kids. Get this. Y'all better get me this morning. There is an it that the devil has sent to be a part of your family and it keeps on hanging around. It's in your living room when you're praying. It's at your job when you're trying to concentrate. It's on your, it's on a mission and the it is only on a mission to give you nothing but havoc. The Bible says the devil only comes to steal, kill, and destroy and unless you deal with the it you won't have any peace in your life. It's time to fix the stuff in your family. Lastly, your friends. Faith, family, and friends. This is the last thing. Let's, let's, let's get ready to land this thing together. The Bible says in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. You see, years ago, before Love or Hip Hop Wives of Atlanta was a show called I Love Lucy, and the show fe featured Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball. You see, Lucy was always coming up with some crazy story, y'all, uh, 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 some crazy way, some ridiculous scheme to make money or to get famous or etc. But, but in the show, Lucy had a close friend, and the close friend's name was Ethel. And no matter how insane, no matter how dangerous, no matter how rude, Truly inappropriate the plan was, Ethel was right there with her. You see, today people really don't value friendship like they used to. You see, sometimes uh, 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 in today's generation, they're your friend on Wednesday, uh, 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 but, but, by, but, but by the time Sabbath hits, hits uh, or, or rolls around, they're talking about you on Instagram, they're talking about you on Facebook, Snapchat, uh, uh, Kick, whatever y'all want to call it. Uh, 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 we don't value the same thing as worthy in friendship or loyalty. In fact, when things get thick, it's easy to determine who your real friends are. Let me pause for a commercial break. Young, some young person out there, listen to me. That person is really not your friend if they're trying to get you to compromise your belief system in God. That person really isn't your friend, sweetheart, if they're trying to get you to compromise uh, uh, what God has told you to say for your husband. That, 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 that person really isn't your friend, homeboy, if they're trying to get you to become or be something you're not by sagging your pants and putting a, a, a gun on your hip and trying to invoke fear in your neighborhood. That's not a real friend. 
But the, you see there, simply, simply put, it's, 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 it's the motives that folk have that call, you for, that, that call themselves friend that allow you to tell the difference. You see, there are different types of friends, and I'm almost done. Y'all, y'all just hang in there with me just for a moment longer. There's different types of friends. You see, there's the gossiping friend. That's, that's, that's the person that never has anything positive to say about anyone. Yeah, yeah, God, the gossip is their daily ritual, uh, and, and the same business that they are telling about someone else, chances are they're telling someone else about you. That's the gossiping friends. And then, 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 there's, your, then there's the drunk friends. And I know that we are all Christians, and we are saved and sanctified by the Holy Ghost. But for some of you who are watching, you might have some of those drunk friends. They drink on every occasion, birthdays, holidays, just because it's Wednesday. You can't take them anywhere uh, uh, because they are the loud ones that's always getting arrested or harassed by the police. Uh, they're the sick ones throwing up in the back seat. They're the ones with the false courage that always wants to fight. Those are the drunk friends. Then, 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 then there's the needy friends. The, uh, they have a nine-to-five job, uh, but, but, but they, they, they never have any money. They, they owe everybody, and borrow is another word for never seeing your money again. From gas money to clothes, from clothes to curling islands, if they had their way, they would borrow your husband or your wife. They are fair weather friends because when you need them, they are nowhere to be found. But but lastly, there's that Ethel that you that that that, that some of us have had. That's the true friend. That's the one that never spreads your business. That's the one who will fight for anyone to defend your honor and your dignity. Who cries with you when you are going through your storm? If you're if 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 you are in a crisis, they are in the crisis with you. I read a quote somewhere that says a real friend is someone who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. The Bible says that these folk in this story that Jesus gives, these folks knew their friend was sick. They knew that Jesus could heal them. Uh, they, they, they would not rest until he was all right. The man who was described in the text suffered from the palsy, but, but what's interesting is as crazy and as dangerous as the plan was, he trusted their judgment, and, and they all trusted in the Savior. The Bible says in Proverbs 27 and 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend, uh, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Why am I telling you this now? Because during the midst of this crisis that we are in, during the midst of this pandemic, somebody needs to really reach out to that friend and someone may have been reaching out to that friend and been praying with that friend and crying with that friend and letting that friend know that everything is going to be all right. And if that friend cannot trust your words, I'm praying that they trust the Jesus in you. you you see, God is sending you to bring some peace to somebody's life through how you have been living yours. And you never mix seasonal people with lifetime expectations. And some friends, some friends God has brought to help you see the truth. You see, a real friend is going to tell you the truth, and, and, and they won't rest in the idea of telling you what you want to hear, but rather what will help you in your life. A true friend will tell you if you're not going to marry him or her, take your hands off another man's future. A, a, a true friend will say the reason why you can't keep a job isn't because they aren't hiring. The real, the real reason, sweetheart, is because uh, 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 you keep the company of Hennessy and e, e and J and Mary Jane. A real friend well, say the truth is, if you want any peace in your life, when you surrender your heart to the master, Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Is your all in the altar of sacrifice laid? Do your heart, does the spirit control? You can only be blessed if you find peace and sweet rest, if you yield him your body and soul. It was this hope in an otherwise hopeless and helpless situation that changed the life of these people and helped this man who had the palsy be saved forever. We cannot give up on our friends because God has not given up on us. The title of this sermon is called Jessica's Well in 1987, and I'm done. Jessica Morales fell in her aunt's well in Midland, Texas. On October 5th, 14th, 1987, she was 18 months old, 56 hours she was stuck in this well. And her family did not give up on her. Her friends never lost hope. But most of all, 
most of all, even as a baby, I truly believe that she was taught how to keep faith in God. We have fallen <laughs> in Jessica's well. The world doesn't make sense. There's uncertainty everywhere. But just like the family and the friends and the faith was never let go of, God is saying, I'm going to do whatever I can to pull somebody out of that well. I ain't going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I will send friends your way. I will talk to your family. I will do whatever I need to do to save you from Jessica's well. And today, right now, there is someone who needs to finally let go and let God. Yeah, you, you, you've, you, you've been trying everything else and nothing else is working. It's time. We have a few more weeks left in this year. It's time to go ahead and give God your hand. But most of all, give him your heart. 2020 has shown us that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know who holds the future, but I, know, I, mean, I don't know what, what, what's going to happen in the future, but I know who holds the future. So it's time. It's time. It's time to, to fill out that card for baptism. It's time. It's time to give your heart to God. It's time to separate from those people who, do, who don't mean your life no good. It's time. It's time to stop wasting time and do it. Father in heaven, I'm praying right now. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over that young man's life, over that young woman's life, over that individual right now who has been crying and pleading out for you every single moment. You know how they've been aching and praying in the midnight hour. You know what they're going through. I'm praying, Father, that they will find a way to break free through the power of the Almighty God. I'm praying for angels that excel in extraordinary power right now in the name of Jesus to descend and to break that person free right now. That person who was thinking about suicide before they turned on this, this message. That person right there who was, who was getting ready to walk away from God. That person right there who was going to join that gang or that person who was just thinking about, Lord, about, about becoming pregnant and becoming a teen mother. I pray right now and cancel every assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood. Someone within the sound of my voice, I want you to call in to the pastor of this church and say, hey, it's me. It's me standing in the need of prayer. And we are careful to give you all the honor and the glory both now and forever. Our faith, our family, and our friends, let us take heed and begin, Lord, to fix those relationships in Jesus' name. Amen.